Hello and welcome to Wobi. It's great to have you with us. Hello and welcome to On The Record. My name's Chris Stanley. I'm here at the Radio City Music Hall in New York where the World Business Forum is currently taking place. And I'm delighted to be joined today by the legendary former world chess champion, Gary Kasparov. Gary came to international fame as the youngest world chess champion in history in 1985 at the age of 22 and spent 20 years as the world's top ranked player. He has since become an outspoken voice in the pro-democracy movement in Russia and a powerful advocate of education and human rights around the world. Gary, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks for inviting me. Um, You've got a very interesting profile in that you've, um, you, you grew up in the old Soviet Union and now you, you live in, in the US and, and you're fighting for, for democracy in Russia again. Globally, I just, it's, I, I view that every dictatorship, uh, every violation of human rights uh, on the planet I mean, should be confronted. And I do as much as I can to raise my voice to confront these injustices. How did your background in the Soviet Union develop your values that you're living today? Um, uh, it, thanks for my um, sort of uh, family education. You know, my family was divided. I had on, on my mother's side a grandfather um, who was a diehard communist. Uh, but on my father's side, father uh, himself, who died when I was very young, but his brother and uh, uh, their relatives, uh, they were uh, very, I wouldn't go pro-democracy, but they, they were open. and. Uh, I had a chance to read books, and uh, also I had a chance to travel at an early age, age 13, first time I travel, uh, traveled outside of Soviet Union just to play uh, World Championship under 16. So um, it was not difficult for a man who had analytical mind, so an ability to analyze the facts, to reach a, a, a conclusion that the Soviet system was uh, not a sophisticated one. It's, it was a dead end. and. Uh, uh, the individual freedom uh, was paramount for any mm, for successful society. Yeah. When did you um, develop or you realized that you had this, this analytical mind, this talent, uh, this talent for chess, and, and, and how did you start to develop that? Uh, it was at a very, very early age, so just it's, I learned how to play chess around, the, around six. Right. And um, since I was sent to, to a chess a group in a pa Pioneer Palace uh, in Baku, my native town. So um, nobody had doubt that I would be a very good chess player. Mm. It's hard to predict whether a young talent at age seven or eight could be the world champion, but uh, it was hard to make a mistake by predicting that I would be a very, very strong player. And um, as I grew up, uh, you know, I, I was getting uh, uh, even keener and keener in, 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 in studying chess and uh, playing the game of chess. And uh, my mother was uh, was a full supporter um, of uh, my chess engagement. Um, and uh, you know, probably age 12, 13, you know, that was quite clear that I would be fighting for the sort of for for the highest spot on the chess Olympus again. You know, just to, to become the world champion, you need uh, everything but, uh, plus an, an element of luck. Well, I was just going to ask you that. Yeah, I mean, what, what do you uh, put the, your, the ingredients of your success down, success down to? You obviously had talent. I imagine hard work is another one. What, what, tell us what you I, put there. Look, yes, aptitude for chess is important. So without talent, yeah. you, you can't move uh, 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 too far. But uh, I'm a little bit uncomfortable hearing people uh, who say, okay, he doesn't have much talent, but he's a hard worker. Mm. I believe working hard is also part of talent. So this is, I, I was never short of this part of talent. So I, I, I love the game of chess, and I learned from my mother that working hard was, you know, was a, a sort of a precondition for any, any, any success. That's why neither when I was a teenager or nowadays I'm, I'm, I'm escaping from hard hard work. So I know it's, you know, it's, it's, it's inevitable, it's necessary. And, you know, if it's necessary, you just have to, to do it and, 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 and enjoy it. And, um, and I was probably lucky because it just, it's, I had my mother who, after 
my father died, uh, she dedicated her life to my success. Mm. I had uh, great, great uh, uh, coaches and teachers uh, surrounding me. So I grew up, you know, with a lot of uh, uh, warmth and, and professional advice helping me to um, uh, demonstrate my best quality. You were known in the game of chess as, as a, an attacking player, as a creative yeah, player, as a risk taker. Exactly. So you, I am. You've got to the point then. They're, they're, they're your characteristics. That's who you are as a person. Are they? Did they? Are they you were born with those. Are they? They, they develop. Are they are that part of the strategy that you are, you took consciously. Uh, no. The if you want to be a top chess player, you have to learn different techniques and you have to be able to do different things at the chessboard but but when you play you know the the, the key matches mm. uh, facing formidable opposition the players of the same caliber it's very important that you 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 create positions you create a landscape of the battlefield that fits your uh, uh, your nature because whatever decisions we make you know most likely it will be you know the at a certain point, we reach the, the, the we, we reach the climax of the game, the climax of the battle, and we always are under, under time pressure, and that's that's where our gut feelings will will prevail. So I I was an aggressive player, and I, I was very good in just doing that. I could do other things. I could play a quiet positional game, but naturally I was lethal for my opponents when I could reach positions where my senses could be used for 100 percent so just to understand you know how you could sacrifice a piece gaining some time you know creating some quality advantages over you know material sacrifices I, that's that's where i was unbeatable and uh, you know i i always tried to uh play the openings and to create the middle game positions that could benefit me mostly so chess is a battle um it is and do you take that mindset outside of the game of chess? Is that mindset of, of, of battle um, something that you... It's, your nature is your nature. Whether you play chess, whether you do business, uh, whether you have your family affairs, whether you are in politics, you should understand that you know the moment you face challenges, uh, most likely you, you, your, your reactions will be very much based on your on your nature so um, and that's why you have to you know you have to work it out you have to to do the sort of the regular research of your own strengths and weaknesses so you have to be very open-minded you have to look inside you have to be relentless by uh, by criticizing yourself for mistakes that you made so those things are you know vital and again I learned them from chess so I could easily, you know, apply lessons from the game of chess to to uh, other engagements that I have in in other walks of life. And talk about applying the lessons. Let's just do that. Let's bring that into business. A lot of people watching this are interested in management, business, business leaders, people working business. How? What are some of the lessons that, that could be applied into a business environment? You know, it's the it's the the number one lesson is that you know you cannot expect to receive a universal tip if you are in the audience listening to a business guru, you should remember that whatever he or she says may work or may not work for you. Because uh, decision-making process is as unique as DNA and, and fingerprints. Mm -hmm. And before you can expect to improve as a decision-maker, you must uh, understand your own strengths and weaknesses. You know, the, 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 the road uh, to, to, sort of a, to, to become a great decision-maker starts from inside. So that's the first step is to say, who am I? So am I a more attacking player or defensive player? Am I comfortable with you know, a certain environment? And the last thing you want is to challenge your own nature. If somebody tells you, oh, you are probably too aggressive, no, 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 this is, that's absolute nonsense. So it's, 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 you just have to you know, uh, work on creating conditions for your business, for your political career that will benefit your nature. Again, it's we different, you know. Some of us are more aggressive. Some of us are, you know, more defensive. It doesn't become a decisive factor uh, uh, um, for the outcome of the game. So you had, you know, in, in, in football, you had Brazil, you had, you know, five times World Cup winners. Yeah, this is the 
classical, you know, aggressive, Jogo Bonito style. Yeah. You have Italians winning four times. So that's the, uh, I think you have Germans winning also now, now yeah. uh, um, uh, also winning, uh, winning four times. So, and different styles, yeah. totally different styles. It's a, but it's very important that you have the team that, you know, could actually force, you know, the others to play the, the football that, that benefits them. In tennis, you can have, you know, those that have a very powerful serve and they rush to the net, or those who are just, you prefer to stick to the game from the, from, from, from the back line. Mm -hmm. Both players could be number one. So uh, it's, 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 not, it's not about changing your nature. It's about so uh, perfecting it by just adding elements that you don't have. And recognizing it. Rec Re now, now recognizing. If, if you don't, if you're not good at doing something, I mean, fine. Just, you know, recognize that. Try to improve. But also remember that the battle, the final battle, should not be in the territory that where you, you, you're weak. Mm -hmm. uh, try to make sure that, you know, you, 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 the, the, the moment when you have to make the most important decisions, the, the, the environment will be mm, will make you feel comfortable yeah. because again it's, it's all about gut feelings the, the, the crucial decisions made under, made under time pressure uh, they will very much reflect the way you know you, you, you're, you're built so that's why creating the right environment for the for, for, for the battle uh, it's about 50 percent of success interesting yeah how do you deal because occasionally it did happen deal with loss and failure Look, uh, loss is inevitable. If you want to, to fight, if you want to win, you know, you should recognize that uh, there are bad days. You lose. Now, it's very important not to be afraid of failure because one of the problems we're dealing with today in modern society, even in the schools, is that kids are being taught that failure is nothing but failure. Mm. I think we should teach kids and we should also you know, make sure that it was in the corporate world, you know, that says the failure is no longer treated as failure. It's an it's inevitable step towards success. So yes, it's this failure can hand happen, but if you're afraid of failure, that dramatically increases chances that you'll fail. So just to eliminate the fear of failure, it's a very important step forward. Yeah. Um, when you look around the world today, um, at at leadership in the world today um, and the strategies that some of the, the world's leaders are, are playing out in some of the um, the conflicts that you see. I mean, specifically the one that you, you know very well is between Russia and that's, that's taking place at the moment. Are you seeing um, errors, um, things that, that leaders should be doing differently um, today? Now, uh, before we analyze the performance and, uh, and look for specific mistakes, I mean, we have to talk about strategies. and. Uh, I could see strategy on the opposite side, so on the, from the bad guys. I could see Putin's strategy. I'm, you know, it's it's dangerous strategy. It's counterproductive for the interest of peace, but it's a strategy. It's his strategy uh, based on his recognition that his survival will need, you know, this aggressive policies to sell the mythology for Russian people. That he is Vladimir the Great, a new collector of Russian lands. That's his strategy. We could see the strategy for ISIS. They are very, very skillfully using modern uh, communications, uh, 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 these devices, to promote their message. Mm -hmm. they, and they know what they want. So it's, it's, it's all about you know, gaining benefits uh, from you know, immediate benefits, but also you know, they want more territories and uh, they want to attract different you know, uh, uh, groups of Discontented people. Discontented people yeah. around the world. So, yeah. And, you know, thanks to the technology we provided them, they can reach out millions of potential recruits. Iranian mullahs, they have a strategy. So China has a strategy. Now tell me if the United States has a strategy. My answer is no. We don't have a strategy. You may again agree or disagree with George W. Bush, and I think many things that were done wrong, wrongly, but at least, you know, he had some f form of a vision. I think that's, it's, it's, it was, it was uh, not adequate in many cases. I think you know, he uh, applied force too often, mm -hmm. which is not good. Yeah, uh, but uh, the problem is you know, that the, the current administration has no strategy at all. And so having no strategy at all, that's a recipe for disaster. The free world has no strategy. Since 1991, at the end of the Cold War, the Western world failed to come up with a new comprehensive vision of the future. 
So what, is, what, what we lack today is, 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 is not just an immediate reaction on the crisis, whether it's you know, ISIS, Ebola, Putin's measure of Ukraine, or Iranian nuclear program. We need vision. We need you know, strategy you know, in the next 10, 20 years. And not about markets. It's about where the world want, where we want to be. What are we going to fly to Mars or why? How are we going to improve, you know, the, our, you know, um, the, the health care system? And I'm not talking about, you know, the legal uh, problem. I'm talking about dramatic improvements of, of medication, so of, of uh, uh, drugs, of, you know, of diet. So, and how are we going to innovate? So which is what, are, what are the new frontiers? It's not about iPhone 6. Well, what about, you know, the Apple II? I mean, something that changes everything dramatically. So there's so many great things that have been in the process of not even making, but at least discussions in the 60s and 70s, and we forgot them because they're too risky, too unpredictable. I want us to go back and to make the part of the pitch of the developed world, of, the, of our civilization, as the, sort of the, as, as the response to the challenges from the other side of the fence. So what's changed? Why is that stopped? Why is the, why is the, is it the developed world? Do you complacency. Think? Complacency, you know, comfort. You know, people are comfortable. That's, you know, it's the baby boomers generation experienced enormous comfort, never before in the history of human race. So why to take a risk if you can talk about, you know, uh, social problems and curing the social ills? Again, a lot of great things happen, you know, emancipation, desegregation, you know, but, you know, but doing this, you know, you, you should not eliminate other things. You know, it's just, I'm happy to have all these new iPhones, but not at the expense of new Apollos. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we go back to the, uh, to the algorithm that made uh, this country, the United States, the, the, the free world, a success story. And it based on, on the recognition that the risk and the rewards, they're connected. Eliminating risk will eventually you know, dump your, your rewards. And now we, we, we live in a world where everybody wants to limit risk, but we don't want to sacrifice our, our rewards. And, you know, that's the, the way to do it, you know, you, you keep printing money, but that's not the solution, long-term solution. Doesn't democracy make it difficult for leaders to take risks? If people are comfortable, people want to maintain their, com their comfort. No, I agree. That's why I, I, I talked about, you know, this, the, it's, it's like a circle, because it's not just corporate world, it's not just, you know, uh, mm, people who are connected to the, to the, to the corporate interests, but it's also consumers, and consumers are voters. And uh, if you have baby boomers, by the way, when you look at the demographics of the voters, most of them who vote, they are just, you know, they are 50 plus. Mm -hmm. So get definitely, this is not a generation that is willing to, to vote for change. So and if you have the majority of people that, 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 that are scared to, to, to damage the status quo, you will have politicians that you know just follow this you know this order quote unquote, um, but it's 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 a cultural phenomenon, and uh, you know you just have to ab appeal to the to the younger segment of population that I've been doing it for for years by telling them that you know you will not inherit you know the same social guarantees as your parents or grandparents. You have to build a brand new world, and that's why you know just I. I keep talking about, you know, these, 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 these iPhones, you know, you, you have so much power in your pocket now, and this power should be used not just, you know, to, for, for the games or for social media. I mean, you have to think how to apply these powers to create something, you know, breasting. And how do, and how do we do that? How, how do we snap people out of uh, this stupor? It's, no, it's, it's, look, it, it doesn't happen overnight, you know. I think it's just, it's, 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 it's about, it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a cultural approach, which means we have to keep, we have to, we have to talk about it. Right. I mean, it's, we have to fight a very dangerous illusion that we're living in an era of the greatest technological development. No, it's a stagnation because it's all incremental. So we just, you have all these things, but they are still, it, it's the same dimension. It's the same horizontal. So the, it's, yes, we have many new drugs today, but do we have anything close to penicillin, something that, you know, saves lives, something that, you know, dramatically changes our, you know, the, the outcome of, of potential outbreaks. So something that, you know, like Apple II, you know, just creates brand new industry. No, it's all the same. So we, we, when we look at the, at, the, at the markets, you know, they always, you know, just try to, the markets, they are the, all based around the blue chip. So that's, it's the market very much, you know, just is, is based on protection of existing uh, 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 leading companies, and these companies are sitting on, on tons of cash. You know, if 
Apple's R&D is under 2%. I mean, it's, 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 it's what do you expect, you know? How do you expect to move forward? So if the, if the greatest technological brand in the world is willing to protect its patterns rather than to invest in, in something, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, breakthrough. Mm. What is the role of leadership in this, in, in making this change? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's... Or is it more it's, societal? It's, it, it, look, it's, it's, uh, you may call it a vicious circle because in one side, you know, you have a societal uh, um, changes and uh, the public that dominates uh, the society demands political, you know, the politicians to follow the message. But sometimes you have great politicians, you have leaders. And it's just, it's, you have Winston Churchill's of this world, you have Ronald Reagan's of this world, you have Maggie Thatcher's of this world. Unfortunately, you know, we are just running short of these of, of, of these individuals. I say that we have a lot of Chamberlains around and no Winston Churchill, you know, <laughs> just this is, yeah, this, that's a problem, you know, because it's just, it's over generations, you know, we, 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 we have been encouraging politicians to become less and less dramatic in their approach. Final question, Gary, coming to the end of our time. Are you, give us your vision of the future. Are you optimistic? Is this gonna change or, or you, how do you see the future playing out? Um, I remain, remain an optimist. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe because of by nature, I'm uncured optimist. I understand all the challenges. I understand that in, 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 in many cases, we are fighting an upheaval battle, battles, but I believe in the genius of mankind and I believe in the uh, strategic advantages of the free world. And I believe that if we let it work, you know, just it's, if we encourage young generation uh, to follow the great examples of the past and just to, to start innovating again and just to, to take the risk, there's so much we can do. It's, 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 it's the history doesn't end. History is like a season. So, and if we go through winter now, yes, we just have to make sure that there will be spring and summer. So it's just to, we just have to do our work. And, uh, you know, in the spiral of history, you know, we just have to make sure that, you know, we'll make the greatest contribution. Yes, we're going probably through a winter now. But, you know, winter, unlike history, winter does end. That's great, Gary. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been Thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure having you with us. I hope you've enjoyed the show and look forward to having you with us next time on On The Record. Until then, goodbye.